Hey man, but uh, you know, like I said, I don't, I, you know, I'm not, I moved on from from playing. Yeah. So I'm you about, can still come I'm about that, that that DLC. I'm a DLC boy. <laughs> One of these. That's all good, man. Okay, I love I love all the Smash games. Yeah. Man. Love all, love them all. Platform fighters um, out of them all, Smash is definitely my favorite. Probably the best. Mm. Um, so I imagine it's going. To, is it going to be Sheik versus Marth? Marth, yeah, probably. Um, I don't know exactly what we're going to. Okay, no, oh, no Puff. Puff Mark. Okay. So um, contrary to what Hungrybox has shown us all, um, other than Hungrybox, this is traditionally thought to be a Marth favorite matchup. Okay. Um, it should be really hard for Puff to get in. If you can picture like they're them with their longer. Hitbox is extended like the forward air from Marth and the back air from Jigglypuff. The difference is um, the disjointedness. Yes. The entire sword isn't a hurt box. Most of Jigglypuff's back air, it feels like not most of it, but most of it is a hurt box. So if you can space it just right, uh, most of the time Marsh should come out on top. Not only that, but his um, ability to kill Jigglypuff has only been improving with the recent technology. Okay. Uh, the pivot tippers out of the throws, yes. the throw mix ups. Um, I know Stango can do funny things with down airs and tech chases. So he'll down air them and then knock them down. Tech chase with a reverse dolphin slash to end the stock. Um, so we'll see exactly how it plays out. Adamesk, of course, uh, going to try to put himself in a spot where it's difficult to hit him and then get some free chip damage. Now that Mars out of percent, he can get knocked down. He's in a much better position. All right, yeah, and Adam is sharking through. Getting the up airs in. I like that. He didn't reach yes. too far. Yes. He just got his very safe. All right, I'm happy to get these two hits. Now let's play the game again. Yeah, and he still had the position, and um, that's the type of play that makes you such a phenomenal Smash player across many games. Um, knowing when you can't go any farther. Yes. Because if he had, I mean, he was going to get punished. Yeah, and Sango actually, uh, fortunately, he didn't get uh, blasted into oblivion. Um, from doing that forward smash at such, such close range there. Yeah, and it looks like uh, he's reaching for the forward smash a little bit. Someone like Adamus, you can't afford to keep doing that. Yeah, and Adam is going to get a nice and easy edge guard there, grabbing the ledge, forcing Mark on stage, hitting him right back off, getting that first stock. You see, I, I can feel that Stangle's looking for that F smash. There it is. <laughs> Oh, oh, nice! And getting the reverse hitbox of the rest. Yeah. Yeah, that precision from Adamus makes all the difference. Uh, he may have been able to live on the other side. Maybe not, but it may be. Yeah, we'll never know because Adamus did it optimally. Yeah, definitely. I do hope uh, Stango not still thinking about his recent loss to Bones. Um, yeah, you gotta yep. have short-term memory when uh -huh. you're a competitor, that's for sure. Definitely. Okay, I like the way he's staying underneath the Jigglypuff. Didn't really put himself in a position to oh. threaten though. Wow. Yeah, that was really good. So that detail um, just positioned Adamus very, very well to trying and force that jump. He got the jump, the, the forward smash. Gonna anti-air Adamus out of that. Get the KO. The second the there. dunk to dunk coming through. And Adamus now has lost the lead here. Let's see if he can take it right back from Stango. Yeah, to continue on to your point, um, what Stango is abusing with that detail, popping Adamus into that little position, is although Puff has five midair jumps, the vertical mobility actually isn't all that good. Yeah. The jumps don't go that high. You can't fastball that quickly. So if Marth can sort of put Puff in this awkward position where she doesn't really have any strong options. Oh, wow. Stango doing, yeah, doing that, that uh, get up attack, saving himself right there. Last stock situation. Yeah, and there's a nice little detail there. But no Adamus. jumps. Oh, man. Adamus getting away with one right there. Going for Dancing Blade. One to up tilt. That's a floaty killer right there. Yeah. Okay, Adamus was able to crouch cancel. He's still off the stage. He needs to find his footing just for a second in order to get a chance. Nice. Good fake out there by Adamus. I like the crouch cancel from Stango. Nice, just run up grab with Jigs. Oh, but Adam is slipping off the ledge. Oh, nice. Yeah, reaching a little bit with the forward air. Stango responding with that kill option. Going to get game one here. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, Stango put himself in a position where he could respond to almost anything Adamus did. And he saw him overextend a little bit, gets the F smash. Um, 
Judging from his the face that he made, I think that was such a reaction, his brain didn't even know that his body did it. Um, go back and watch the replay if you can. It was pretty funny. Back to Battlefield again. Um, interesting. I, mean, I think most people uh, pick Dreamland in the Marth Puff matchup. But there are there are proponents there are opponents of that who say uh, Dreamland one of the more Marth favorite stages. I mean, I would still expect to see it. I guess you have such a good game against one of the best players in the region on Battlefield. Yeah. And uh, you want to give it another shot. Not only that, but maybe uh, that last set on Tuesday he won a game here. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, right now it's not working out for Adamus. And Snango really establishing that detail a lot here uh, for the, the reasons that you stated. Yeah. Um, trying to take advantage of the uh, response out of it. And you see right there, taking advantage of the, the slow vertical burst from Jigglypuff's jumps. Even though she has multiple jumps, the airspeed uh, on the lift and the lack of um, you know early fastball timing on it uh, just doesn't lend to Jigglypuff responding well if she chooses to jump in that situation. You know, it's funny. I was just thinking, like, yeah, he's using the detail, but isn't Puff usually in the air? And now that I'm yeah. watching closer, Adamisk is uh, crouching a lot. And, no, I mean, crouching's good against uh, Marth, because if you do a jump, cancel, grab, you can crouch under it and get a rest or a big punish. Mm -hmm. But he's doing it so much. I don't know. I think uh, Stango hasn't fallen for it yet. Maybe it's time to switch that up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. And There's that now that again. we think about it, Stango hasn't really been going for too many grabs either. Yeah. So uh, you're trying to bait out an option that's pretty secondary for your opponent. Uh, they're just going to keep doing what they were doing because yeah. if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? Yeah, to them, there's no problem to adjust. Yeah. So it's, it's DB1 not to up tilt, going to get that KO, the floaty killer coming into play. I was about to say, <laughs> melee has this thing, man, where sometimes you get hit and it's like the quietest kill. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like poof, you die. When the knockback reaches a certain threshold, you get a noise from the character, like what Martha just did there, or like a death scream or something. Yep. But sometimes, if you don't di quite right, the knockback's not high enough for them to make that noise, <laughs> but you still fall off the side like that. Nice. That was amazing stuff, Stango. That retreating fair was pretty godlike. Yeah, it looked like Adamus really wants to gain control of center stage, and Stango um, using this to his advantage. Not, he's sort of like tethered to the middle of the stage, and he's just pivoting around it. Adamus now trying to corner Stango here, corral him into a spot that uh, you know he can manage to take this stock. But Stango being very, very, um, what's the word I can use? Hard-headed. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to, to doing what Adamus needs, uh, or being where Adamus needs him to be. Mm -hmm. Always fighting out, always with a very crisp moving, uh, movement option. Look at that right there. And once again, the floaty killer coming into play. Adamus uh, losing control here in game two. Not, not so much the close match that we saw in game one so far, but it's not over yet. Yeah, it looks like Stango's really locked in. Uh, his play has been sort of like how I described it before his first match uh, against Bones. He's been playing defensively by default, but then when he gets those reads, he's ready to make the down tilt happen, ready to uh, come in with a fair. But, you know, by default, you can see him right there, swinging a little bit, trying to roll out, not really doing anything crazy. And um, it's such a solid foundation for him to build the rest of his game around. Oh, yeah, going for, going for that little DI mix up there. Yep. There it is, yeah. So if you DI for down throw and you do four and you, if Mark does four throw and the and Jigglypuff is DIing for down throw, that means that Jigglypuff is DIing into Mark, which yep. allows Mark to get that tipper. And then vice versa, yep. if you're DIing for four throw and you get down throw, then boom, you get that forward smash tipper. Yep. So very nice stuff. But yep. we are getting a change to Samus. You know, he was playing his Samus um, against me earlier, and it was pretty good. It was pretty good. And, uh, it's not a character I see very often out of Adamisk. Um, maybe he has a reason. And, you know, this traditionally is thought to be a very strong matchup for Marth. Yes. Um, it's so easy to get Samus with a few forward airs up to, like, 100%. The hard part is killing him, especially when you're playing as smart as Adamus usually does. Yeah, and, and really when it comes to Samus, is, uh, in Melee, it's it's very funny because it's not a character like 
like you really melee esque when it comes to interactions, you know? Yeah, close uh, to Street Fighter or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, when I when I was playing melee, I always used to say like, all right, it's, it's time for me to have a more brawl mentality when it comes to fighting Samus. Yes. Get the hit, reset positioning. Get the hit, reset positioning. You know, it's uh. One of those type of things. Yeah, my first uh, Smash Sensei, back when I was a Marth main, um, Archangel told me, against Samus and Ganondorf, you play for the timeout and let them beat themselves by accidentally hitting them. Okay. And, um, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's one way to do it. Nice Mustango making a lot of accidents here. Getting uh, Adamus to now 73%. Look at all these accidents. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, very nice falling fair there. But nice response here by Adamus. The F tech. beautiful text coming yes. through. Stango staying alive. Yeah, you know, he's been real good at that. I saw him playing friendlies with Mewtwo King, teching again and again, just like that. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Good pressure by Adamus by the ledge, but Stango using Mark's mobility to fight his way out. I have to say, a strong defensive option from Adamus. Uh, Stango starts the Nair. Adamus smashed you guys upward, so the second strong hit doesn't connect. Yes, very nice. Will we get a tether? Yes, we will. But Dolphin Slash going to interrupt it. Stango go for down smash. Very interesting. Oh, up tilt. Just, yeah, it came out of nowhere. Yeah, just going to uppercut Samus right in the bottom of her helmet. Yeah, wave dashed right at him. I wonder what that was meant to be. Yeah, Dancing Blade won the up tilt. We've been seeing it all set. It's been the uh, the kill option of choice here for Stango against all of Adamus' characters. Okay. Nice, beautiful space yeah, that there. Was, that one um, forward air, if he didn't drift back and didn't tip her, he was going to get down smashed for it, for certain. Okay, yeah, some tight neutral interactions right in the middle of the stage. Oh, oh, oh I okay. thought we were going to get the double <laughs> dunk there. Oh, it, I like the missile idea. Yeah. That's different. Uh, Stango is all over Adamus here. Down smash. Not, not going to get that. it done. Wow. It's doing like every smash attack that <laughs> isn't that great. <laughs> you just spin the yellow stick around. Eventually it'll work out. All right, yeah, so this is the uh, the painful part, not just for Marth, but also for Samus. Samus up to like 200%. And in these kind of matchups where it's hard to kill the opponent, a lot of Marth players get frustrated. But um, if you think about it the right way, often the Peach or the Samus or whatever it is is just as frustrated that they yes. have to recover over and over. So use that as fuel for yourselves, Marth fans. Yep. Okay, falls off, takes the stock. <laughs> They're going to call it. All right, and the 3-0 Stango oh, over Adamus. But a uh, pretty entertaining set, man. We see, we yeah. saw a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge being dropped, I think, uh, especially from the side of Stango. Man. Yeah. And uh, Stango was really, uh, you know, implementing some very, very solid fundamental uh, yeah. aspects of fighting Jigglypuff. And then toward the end right there, fighting against Samus. Yes. Just no, uh, knowing how to deal with these floaty characters in nearly every situation. As you said, too, the neutral interactions were very, very tight. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, Stango really benefited.